do you think about a, a, anonymous DAOs uh, and their implications um, on that kind of this social layer that we've been talking about, this community layer? Yeah, I think anonymity at the DAO level, including grant-making DAOs, is um, not a nice-to-have, it's a must-have. If People want to be able to fund what they care about and not just what they're allowed to fund, uh, right? So mm, in the case of like um, a grant-making DAO, like let's say that Malik DAO or Cult DAO was running on anonymity rails, right? Then there would be far fewer constraints on what people felt okay with funding Right, because they would actually be able to use their own voices and come to the table with what they themselves care about, um, not these socially acceptable kinds of things. Right, and then um, that's really that is if decentralization in the social, social or political sense, like, is about anything. Right, it's that because it's taking it's taking away um, the voice in our heads that says, "Oh no, you can't think about that," or you have to believe these things, even if it's just implicit. And being like, no, that's an open sandbox. Like that's conceptual terrain or an idea space that you can feel free to navigate. And then you can financially support it if you want, right? But in this sense, privacy is a precondition for that. It's a precondition for actually being able to step outside of the assumptions that we have. Um, and, you know, I think like people who have background in philosophy, a lot of the time like to say, oh, philosophy isn't separate from everyday life. But it can be hard to see that for a lot of people until something like privacy or something like the right to do various things that you really care about until those things are taken away from you. But none of these things are givens. Like, absolutely. Like in some countries in the West, as it were, like we just happen to be um, in a phase of human history where uh, we think that we have uh, the ability, you know, like we think that we have like freedom of speech or this, this kind of thing. Right. Um, but it's not even that it's not even that we haven't reached a level of authoritarian control over our lives. It's that um, for most of human history, it's just been presupposed that it was your life, not your life given somebody watching you. It's like <laughs> these are things that like you can think about, you can care about. And then to be able to coordinate on, you know, on blockchain rails, uh, just supercharges that because then you can step around you can operate in a parallel network with folks maybe who don't have access to the financial means to support their families in other countries that are uh, um, you know that, that are cut off by sanctions or that um, don't have the infrastructure to actually give them what they need this kind of thing yeah I'm I yeah I, I agree and I think um, one of the interesting things about um, you know, privacy and anonymity uh, is, and it sort of talks about this in the the crypto anarchist manifesto. Um, the kind of change in the nature of the relationships uh, that you have with people, uh, and this I think runs parallel with the kind of thing you you were just saying. Um, allows you to be you know freer in some sense. Allows you to you know vote uh, in in DAO decisions in in a way that's more uh, authentic. Um, so. <laughs> Because you're not you're not uh, like bound by the this kind of you know intangible but real kind of social layer, social pressure. Um, you know, there's like things in your culture, societal norms, uh, and then there's you know like obviously like actual sort of the state, you know, coming after you for your ideas and what you believe in. Um, and that's like even more tangible because that's just like straight up you know straight up force um but then there are you know there's like self-censorship there's different degrees um and uh privacy and anonymity kind of strips that back um but it's also you know if you're working on someone's on something with someone you know uh it's the irl or even online typically let's say if they're not anon you kind of like build this identity structure right? you build this model mm -hmm. um but if that's shifting right how does that change how you um coordinate how does that change how you relate to the people that you're working with uh, i kind of think that's quite like an interesting um topic to explore and i think uh you know one of the things that i've noticed is uh you know it's it, it's i guess about actions right like um 
you know you can see people's work and you, you kind of trust them based on that and uh you know you bond i guess uh, sometimes on more on the work than um on like individual politics or, or things like that um i don't know there's a lot I've, I've i've noticed like a, there are a lot of interest in um kind of social implications for uh like like being anonymous and and how uh, the relationships between people uh are changed it's uh i, I mean yeah have you have you thought much about that? Like the way in, in which, like, how can you, uh, in some sense, the trust model, right? Like how you trust someone in some sense, like tied to what you, who you think they are, right? And what you think you know about them. Yeah, definitely. And action over time does say, I think, more important things about who somebody is rather than what they say about who they are, right? Because ultimately, like the, met- the metric there is... Um, uh, are they doing the kinds of things that, that you identify with? And therefore, it doesn't matter what what religion they are. It doesn't matter what creed they are, color, skin. Um, are they in a country that's sanctioned? It doesn't matter because you resonate with them on a far deeper level. That, to me, puts you both in a place in history, which is a singular kind of like identity over time. right? So when you can identify with people like hundreds of years ago, that's more powerful than what your surname is, or that's more powerful than what <laughs> your social security number is. Like these other things are meaningless essentially, right? Um, and then I think like there's sort of like this myth that if you're in an anonymous DAO that you don't actually know who you're interacting with, but you can have social closeness and close ties, right? You can um, you can you can know absolutely who these people are, but it's there's anonymity with respect to what's publicly visible. Um, so, I mean, you get the best of both worlds, I think. Uh, plus, you know, plus far, <laughs> plus far more than that, because we haven't like we haven't explored the manifestations of being able to put um, put action over like uh, you know like the media driven like um, let's just like look really good, but actually not do what we're going to say or like you know what politicians tend to do and then like they actually don't represent what their constituents want them to do right um so their actions never are a function of constituent votes it's a function of you know what people who funded them want them to do but like if that was but like so you take away the charade and then what you're left with well if you're like in an an anonymity preserving DAO, like a funding DAO, or maybe it's something else right then your identity goes goes far beyond um, goes goes far beyond that, and it's it's at a deeper level that um, that that does that does speak to a lot of people, right? Because like a lot of people, it doesn't matter like if they're in crypto or not, like they feel like there's more to life than like you know surfing Instagram or doom scrolling or like all these other things, right? Or like small talk at like parties. Maybe there are other things to care about. Like maybe you could empathize with people in other countries <laughs> rather than being nationalist. Right, you know th- this 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 sort of contrast. It opens up that contrasting space. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I have a sort of like, um, sure, as many do, a personal journey through that that kind of stuff. You know, when you start questioning the assumptions of, um, you know, things like your your country nationalism, like, uh, oh yeah, like why should I care about these people more than those people? Does does that, does that really make sense? Um, yeah, does it really speak to me? Does it reflect who I am rather than just what I was born into? I didn't choose to be born into that, so why should I value it? Maybe I could, but do I really have to? Yeah. Unchecked governments have eradicated privacy and truth. Those who resist are brought down swiftly, but we refuse to submit. Unipunks are freedom fighters, protected by encrypted shadows. The future we're building is sovereign and uncensorable. The moon at night is coming.